Welcome to episode 248 of Build Your House or Self University by Hi You. I'm your host and fellow student, Michelle Nelson, and together we'll learn the basics of home design and construction and demystify the building process so we can have intelligent conversations with our subcontractors and build quality dream homes with or without a general contractor. It's honestly pretty hard to get excited about drywall. Drywall is a subject that's kind of, well, dry. But drywall is a material that goes in just about every space of the house. So we want to be able to make informed decisions about what type of drywall we should request to make our walls last longer and perform better. I won't go into too much boring detail, but I'm hoping to give you enough information so you could have an intelligent conversation with your builder or drywall contractor. And so we'll know the best type of drywall for different areas of our homes. Despite what you might think, all drywall isn't the same. Let's start by defining a couple of pro terms to give us a good foundation for the rest of the lesson. Our pro terms today are plaster and drywall. Plaster. Plaster starts as a dry powder made of lime or a mineral called gypsum plus sand. This dry powder is then mixed with water to form a stiff but workable paste that's applied to a wall surface. In residential construction, the surface to which the plaster paste is applied is most often made of lengths of wood called lath, which is nailed to wall studs. Several coats of plaster are typically applied to the lath surface to create the finished wall. The multiple coats required for plaster makes plaster more labor-intensive than drywall. Plaster not only takes more time and effort to apply as compared to drywall, but it also requires significantly more skill. And unfortunately, the number of skilled plaster laborers is dwindling. Plaster is most often found in homes built before World War II, but occasionally homeowners request plaster for their new builds, especially if they're building a historical home or an estate type home. Plaster, when done well, can look more high end than drywall, but it's more difficult to hang artwork and mirrors on plaster. And plaster is challenging to repair. Because plaster requires more skill and time to complete, the labor for plaster walls usually costs three times as much or more than drywall installation. However, the material costs for plaster and drywall are pretty similar. So that was our first pro term, plaster. Our second pro term is drywall. Drywall is a flat panel made of gypsum plaster sandwiched between two sheets of thick paper or some other material. So instead of having to mix and apply the plaster paste to walls like you would with plastering, drywall is prefabricated plaster board with some sort of covering. Drywall panels are attached to metal or wood studs using nails or preferably screws. Sheetrock is a specific brand of drywall, but the two terms are often used interchangeably. Drywall is also called wallboard, plasterboard, and gypsum board. Since the vast majority of new builds use drywall instead of plaster, our mini lesson today will focus on drywall. But before we move into the meat of the lesson, I gotta thank Blaxative, who gave us our latest Apple Podcasts five star rating and review. They say the show is great for new homeowners, for people who want to renovate their homes themselves or through a contractor. Thanks, Blaxative, for telling potential listeners that the show can be helpful not only for those building new houses, but also for people buying and remodeling homes. I appreciate you for supporting the show. Thank you so much. Okay, let's talk more in depth about drywall. Drywall comes in four common thicknesses, each used for different reasons. So let's talk about them. Number one is quarter-inch drywall. Quarter-inch drywall is the thinnest of all options. It's most commonly used as a skimming material in remodels. Quarter-inch drywall can be mounted over existing walls 
to hide imperfections and give the house a fresh new look. Some quarter inch drywall is flexible. Flexible quarter inch drywall can also be used to cover curved walls, curved stairwells, and archways and radius ceilings. The thin design makes it easier to bend than standard half inch drywall. And flexible quarter inch drywall is covered with heavier, stronger paper than standard drywall is. This makes the flexible drywall easier to bend and more resistant to cracking. Quarter inch drywall used in new construction is usually applied in double layers with staggered seams when possible. Not all curved surfaces have the same radius. Some are broader half circles and some are tighter. For curved surfaces with a shorter, tighter radius, less than 32 inches, for example, wetting the drywall with a damp sponge or roller may be necessary. The moisture helps the thin drywall to bend without breaking. The second thickness that we'll talk about is three-eighths of an inch drywall. Slightly thicker than quarter-inch drywall, three-eighths of an inch drywall is also a good choice for curved walls. It's also sometimes used to patch damaged drywall. Number three is half-inch drywall. Half-inch thick standard drywall is the most commonly used drywall for new homes. If you don't specify another type or thickness of drywall for your interior walls, this is what most drywall contractors will use. And the fourth thickness is five-eighths of an inch. The thickest drywall that's readily available is five-eighths of an inch. It's often fire-resistant and a good choice for soundproofing rooms. Five-eighths of an inch drywall is a good option for ceilings because it helps to prevent the sagging that can occur when standard half-inch drywall is used for some ceilings. An alternative to 5 eighths inch drywall is half-inch high-strength ceiling panels. Half-inch high-strength ceiling drywall panels are rigid panels with a reinforced gypsum core that resists sagging. Sagging is more likely to occur when regular half-inch drywall is heavily textured on ceilings. There's also a risk of half-inch drywall sagging when the ceiling framing components are spaced widely apart. This can happen when advanced framing is used, where studs and joists are spaced 24 inches apart, so-called 24-inch on center. In standard framing, remember, components are usually spaced 16 inches apart or 16 inch on center. To learn more about advanced framing, take a listen to episode 16. The point here is that if standard half inch drywall is used on certain non-standard ceilings, there's a risk of the ceiling sagging over time. So it's best to use 5 eighths of an inch drywall or half inch high strength ceiling drywall. You can also use lightweight half-inch drywall for ceilings, which is interestingly stronger than standard half-inch drywall. We'll talk more about lightweight drywall in just a second. Okay, so that was drywall thicknesses. There's quarter inch, three-eighths of an inch, half-inch, which is the most common, and five-eighths of an inch. All right, now let's go into the different types of drywall what the drywall is made of, and or what the drywall is made for. To be clear, different types of drywall may come in different thicknesses. But the information we are about to cover will help ensure that you request the correct category of drywall for your specific applications. Let's start with the most common drywall type, standard drywall. Standard drywall doesn't have any special features. It's simply gypsum board in the middle of two sheets of thick paper. Standard drywall is the most budget-friendly option, and it's the most commonly used drywall in residential construction. It's suitable for standard walls and standard, uncomplicated ceilings. Now, the rest of the drywall options on our list are generally more expensive, but they're often better choices for specific circumstances that we'll talk about. So number two on our list is mold and moisture-resistant drywall. Mold and moisture-resistant drywall features a backing or a special coating 
to help prevent the buildup of moisture and mold. It's often used in humid areas like bathrooms, kitchens, basements, and laundry rooms. There are several different types of moisture-resistant drywall. Blueboard is one type of moisture-resistant drywall that's easy to find and relatively inexpensive, making it an ideal option for those on a budget. It still requires a water-resistant barrier between the blue board and tile. Green board is a similar drywall to blue board, but it's made of recycled materials. Like blue board, even though green board is moisture resistant, it still requires a water barrier between the green board and tile. Blue board and green board are older forms of water resistant drywall. Huge quantities of these products are still being used, but they are not the best option for the greatest level of moisture and mold resistance. These are the moisture-resistant drywall panels that should be used if your main priority is budget. Newer forms of moisture and mold-resistant drywall are more effective. Look for names like Mold Tough, Gold Bond XP, M Block, and Tough Rock. The last moisture-resistant drywall that we'll talk about is Cement Board. Cement Board is an option that is the most moisture-resistant drywall available, but it's a more expensive option. Cement board needs to be secured with cement screws, not drywall screws. And it's a good idea to install a vapor barrier behind cement board. This can be in the form of plastic sheets and will help minimize damage if water does make its way through the board. If you're on a budget, you can choose cement board for the most used bathroom in the house, say maybe the primary bathroom, and or the bathroom that's likely to get the most splashes, maybe a kid's bathroom. So use the cement board in those bathrooms. And then to save money, you can use green board or blue board for other bathrooms in the house. Third on our list, fire-resistant drywall. Fire-resistant drywall is made of non-combustible glass fibers in an extra thick design. Sometimes called type X drywall, fire resistant drywall is ideal to use in utility rooms, garages, and areas near a furnace or wood stove. Fire resistant drywall prevents the spread of fires. Plus, it generates less smoke than traditional drywall. A bonus advantage to fire resistant drywall is that it provides better room to room sound control over standard drywall. Building codes may require fire-resistant drywall in specific areas of the house or in many areas of the house if you're in a region prone to wildfires. Number four, soundproof drywall. Soundproof drywall is designed to reduce noise from traveling between walls and through ceilings. It's thicker than most standard drywall sheets, and it often has two gypsum layers that are glued together with a special noise dampening adhesive. Soundproof drywalls vary in thickness from one half inch to five eighths of an inch. Some soundproof drywall is made with a thin layer of metal sandwiched inside to further improve sound dampening. For best soundproofing, you should combine soundproof drywall with fiberglass or open cell spray foam insulation. As an alternative to soundproof drywall, which can be fairly expensive, two sheets of standard drywall adhered together can be used. But note, though, that two sheets of standard drywall will be thicker and take up more space than a single sheet of soundproof drywall. Number five, foil-backed drywall. This drywall has aluminum foil laminated on the back of the panel. The foil adds the insulating value to the drywall. It's used mainly in cold climates to help prevent interior moisture from entering the wall and sealing cavities. Foil-backed drywall can be used over wood or metal framing or over furred-out masonry. It should not be used at the base of tile or highly moisture-resistant wall coverings, such as vinyl wallpaper, because the core of the drywall can absorb and trap moisture and eventually damage the drywall. Foil-backed drywall should also not be used in hot, humid 
climates. Number six, lightweight drywall. A sheet of lightweight half-inch drywall weighs about 41 pounds as compared to 50 to 60 pounds for a comparable sheet of standard drywall. The lightweight drywall panels are interestingly tougher and stronger and more resistant to sagging than standard half-inch drywall panels. Lightweight panels go into place easier and faster than standard panels, and there's less damage to the drywall edges. Because the lightweight panels are superior as far as sag resistance, these lightweight half-inch panels can be used for ceilings, even if wider framing is used, or even if heavy texture is used on the ceiling. The lightweight drywall looks, cuts, installs, and finishes the same as regular drywall. The panels are available in standard lengths ranging from 8 feet long to 16 feet long. Lightweight drywall is also available in 5 eighths of an inch thick. Now, you might be wondering, like I was, why lightweight drywall isn't always used? Are there any disadvantages to lightweight drywall? Because right now, it all sounds good. Well, there are a couple of downsides. Lightweight drywall panels can be more expensive than standard drywall, but that's not always the case. And you may actually be able to negotiate lower labor costs to offset any higher price since the lightweight drywall is easier for crews to work with. The other disadvantage of lightweight drywall is that it's not quite as sound resistant as its standard weight counterpart. Number seven, VOC absorbing drywall. Chosen for improved indoor air quality, VOC absorbing drywall absorbs volatile organic compounds, which cause indoor air pollution. VOC absorbing drywall permanently removes pollutants from the air. Once the VOCs are captured in the drywall, they're never released back into the air. This type of drywall absorbs VOCs up to 75 years. This option is best for people who are particularly sensitive to indoor air pollutants and or those who want an environmentally friendly option. Last on our list is number eight, abuse-resistant drywall. Abuse-resistant drywall is tougher than other types of drywall. It's made of a reinforced gypsum core and smooth but strong abrasion-resistant paper. Abuse-resistant drywall is also called impact-resistant and high-impact resistant drywall. There are some advertisements that claim that panels are just as tough as concrete, and this is probably somewhat an exaggeration, but these panels are definitely tougher than both regular and fire-resistant drywall panels. Abuse-resistant panels can be finished like any other types of drywall, and they may be a good choice for garages, utility rooms, home gyms, mud rooms, and maybe even children's rooms. Well, that's it for our mini lesson today. I think we should do a couple of quiz questions to review some key concepts before you go. Now, this week we focused on information that will allow you to request the appropriate type and thickness of drywall that will be best for your budget and the functionality of your rooms. In the next mini lesson, we'll cover drywall design and finish level and wall textures whether heavily textured walls or smooth walls are trending, and whether bullnose corners are still in style. Make sure you follow the show so that episode goes right into your podcast library as soon as it comes out. All right, ready for your quiz? Question number one. What is the most water-resistant drywall type? A. Cement board. B. Green board. C. Blue board. Or D. Type X drywall? The answer is A. Cement board is the most water resistant drywall. Green board and blue board are also water resistant, but they're not as effective in preventing moisture damage and mold as cement board is. Green board and blue board are, however, budget friendly options. Type X drywall is not water resistant at all. Type X drywall is actually another name for fire-resistant drywall, which is sometimes used in garages and utility rooms. And question number two, true or false? 
the most commonly used drywall thickness in residential construction is half inch drywall. That's true. Half inch drywall is typically used for most interior walls in homes. It's economical and most drywall installers have experience with half inch drywall. Ceilings with half inch drywall can sometimes sag if the framing has wider spacing, such as that used with advanced framing, or if a heavy texture is used on the ceiling, or if there's heavy insulation. So for those ceilings, instead of half inch drywall, you can use five eighths of an inch standard drywall, or high strength half inch drywall, or lightweight half inch drywall, which is surprisingly strong. Well, that's it for us this week. I hope you learned as much as I did, and I hope you'll join me again next time for another episode of Build Your House Yourself University. Bye, hi, you. Please remember that the purpose of this podcast is simply to educate and inform. It's not a substitute for professional advice. The information that you hear is based only on the opinions, research, and experiences of my guests and myself. That information might be incomplete, it's subject to change, and it may not apply to your project. In addition, building codes and requirements vary from region to region, so always consult a professional about specific recommendations for your home.